Why, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Good to have you here, Paul Tranny, diving into today's um, Photoshop challenge. As you can see below me, I'm so thankful you guys are here. Got to watch Kyle T. Webster before this. Um, anyway, it's going to be a good day. I'm so thankful you guys are here. Uh, Steve, want to welcome Michelle, uh, Sam, Susan, yeah, Michelle, audio and video are good. Fantastic. Barbara's in the house. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun because we're dealing with the space theme. Uh, but more importantly, we're going to cover the fundamentals of compositing, right? So uh, again, this is just, uh, well, day three for me for the Daily Creative Challenge. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, feel free to, you know, push questions through. I'll keep an eye on chat. Join me on Behance.net and um, make sure you are... Uh, downloading the file as well, which is right beneath me. You can get your starter files. Um, I will show you that in a second as I switch over. And I go to this one here. Bingo. Ooh. Misclick. Let's take a look right over here. You can see my screen and the starter file is right. Bam. Here. So anyways, that just has about, uh, you know, between five and between five and seven layers, roughly, just different images that uh, I've pulled down that you could use. Thank you so much for posting that, Sam. If you're watching the replay again, the URL will not change. So go ahead and do a screenshot, do whatever you need to. Uh, also, it's just easiest to go to the YouTube or Behance replay. But let's get this party started. You can see right in here, we have this lovely to the moon file here it is this is the composite we'll be working with all right so this is going to be fun and just so you know this is what the uh 43rd i had to look it up i'm way off 53rd anyways this is honor in in honor of the apollo the moon landing basically so that's why i kind of chose this theme right so uh, apollo 11 landed on uh the moon first humans to land on the moon with Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, all those awesome guys. Which, don't they have the coolest names for astronauts? I just think that's awesome. But that's where the theme comes from. Sort of this moon landing. So we're going to do a moon, fun moon composite is the idea. Since the moon landing was faked. I'm just kidding. It's called a joke, people. Lighten up. Just kidding. All right, let's go. <laughs> but in honor of that, I have this hand here. So it's like you're reaching toward for the moon is kind of what we were doing, right? Um, and again, let me just double check on that date, 1969. So yeah, uh, clear up till 1969. We have this, we have a solar system. We have Apollo 11 here as well. So it's pretty darn awesome, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start cutting out all these images and we can always work on the background later. But again, it's just to serve as inspiration for us today. Um, so yeah, and uh, fantastic. Let's get this party started. I'll keep an eye on chat as well. Cool, let's go. Uh, first thing I need to do is cut out this hand. So this is a lot, of compositing deals a lot with like cutting out images. This gets a little tricky. So even starting with this first one, right? What you could do is what you used to do, cause you know, and it still works, is use the magic wand tool. We can click and we can see we sampled most of those white pixels, right? That's kind of what's going on there. We wanna turn on contigu contiguous typically so it doesn't select any whites from the nails or anything and the tolerance is way down so this determines how much of the white we're going to grab let's grab a lot of white and i'll turn off contiguous and we'll click and we'll see what happens see what it gets it gets too much stuff right so again we don't have to go through that tutorial because i don't even need to worry about doing this at all but typically it's a matter of select this is how i used to do things and i still do sometimes depending on the image go through select Turn it into a mask. Oh, it cut it out. Oh, it's because, you know, I turn it into a mask by clicking on this button down here. This adds a mask, okay? And sure enough, here it is. So uh, black conceals, white reveals. So what, what do I have to do? I just got to somehow uh, invert that. So you do Command I. So anyways, that's how I would, no that's how I would normally do this back in the day, is through a lot of work. And this, this shows my amateur niche as well. Cause it'll sometimes like you'll get this pixelation around some borders, right? You are exactly right. It's so much easier now. So let's just undo all that. Cause I think s explaining that kind of helps you appreciate this one smooth move we do nowadays, right? What's the one smooth move? Hey, I do this all the time. 
And I still get questions on Twitter and different places on, on this button, but make sure you have Photoshop updated and under quick actions, twirl that down. As long as it's a pixel-based layer, you could just go ahead and click remove background. What does it do? It selects it intelligently and then it adds that mask right there. So super easy. I do it all the time. Yes, so much easier now. Here's the cool thing about it, by the way. So let me move this up. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully got, yeah. Even if it, I mean, my, my, uh, let me actually undo this. Let me move this down. Let's do remove background. Okay, so uh, it, it does kind of cut off the bottom. I was hoping that it would select it even if it's off the pasteboard, but not so much. Nonetheless, do make sure the whole thing's in view like so. And again, remove background. So we can go through and do that with these other, with this moon, we could do the same thing, okay? And again, you could try these other methods, but I've even tried magic wand tool. Let's increase the tolerance to 22, let's click. If you hold down the, let's go over to this layer so we can see it. Zoop. Usually you're selecting the background, right? So I don't wanna keep the background, I wanna select the inverse, turn the inverse into a mask. So just remove whatever I've selected. So hold down the option key and click, and there we go. We have, this is the uh, lasso tool, excuse me, not the lasso tool, the um, magic wand tool again, right? So that's how we could do that. But again, same thing. What would I do? Open up my properties panel, go to select subject, or excuse me, go to remove background and just use remove background. All right, you guys got the idea. Again, those are the fundamentals. Let's go ahead and apply that elsewhere on the earth. Yeah, let's try that. We could do this a couple different ways and it gets a little bit more complex too. Um, Yes, Peter, by all means, submit something uh, for my stream it would be fantastic. So this gets a little more interesting because we'll try this. We'll go to remove background. That's the quick and easiest. It does give it a little bit of a, of a sharp edge, right? So do I want to have that sharp edge and how can you get rid of it? You could do that a number of ways. There's so many different ways because rather than having this hard edge, I could take this layer mask and I can blur it. So I can go to filter, blur. And again, I think that's kind of like the easiest thing to do, right? Blur that edge. So it grabs some of that blue. Let's see what that looks like now. Bingo. Yeah, did a pretty good job, right? And we could choke it and feather it and all sorts of things too, which sounds so violent, huh? I'm gonna choke and I'm gonna, I'm gonna choke and feather that mask. <laughs> Geez, so violent here. All right, let's do this. Are you ready for this? Ellip, ellipse marquee tool, basically your circle. You can draw out option key and shift key will constrain it and we can kind of select this and move it into place like that. Might be another way to do this. And then let's go ahead and go to our selection. We'll go into modify and you know what? Let's go ahead and feather that edge. So we'll go to feather and then we can feather it out. You know, whatever, let's do 10 pixels. We'll click okay. You won't see much, but it actually did feather it. So let's go ahead and turn that into a mask. Shabamo, and that looks pretty darn good too. So you guys hopefully get the idea. Oh, I hope nobody's having issues with the starter files. Let me know. Uh, I will click here as well, and we'll just double check. Cross our fingers. Okay, there it is. And download, so it's that easy. I hope it opens. It is a larger file, so maybe that has something to do with it. Okay, so let's move on. We're isolating everything. We do that with Apollo 11. Yeah, let's make things happen. Remove background, boom. Let's not stress ourselves out, right? Let's paint with a brush, for instance. On that layer mask, and we can kind of trail out that flame if we want to, excuse me, that jet rocket, and then get into the solar. Uh, 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 solar system, double click. Yeah, I had no problem downloading it and uh, opening it. Okay, solar system, we get even more complex. Look at all this craziness. How do I do this? Do I use my, you know, marquee tool? Whatever the case may be, too much going on. 
Here's one thing you can do, and this is brand new as well, or fairly new, uh, depending on how much you keep track of things. Object selection tool, selecting that. We'll go up to the top. We'll turn on object finder. If it's not turned on, it's gonna go through and find all of the elements. I'll roll over this. Show all the objects, and you can hold in to toggle that, but it's going through and finding all of those objects. So I'm toggling in, and these are the uh, objects that it found. So this is awesome, right? Take that, I could just click on that object. I can copy and paste it above. So now I have that isolated, right? So that's another way of doing this. Again, using this object selection tool. I don't need the earth. Well, I do, because I live here, but I don't need it in my photo. Earth, Mars, all that good stuff. It gets more complex with these other images. Ooh, let's get Jupiter, copy, paste. Saturn, oh, this is gonna be even more tricky. How do we get this? Ooh, it kind of captures the circle, but doesn't grab the whole thing. So let's go to our um, object selection tool and just draw a box around it. And let's see how much it grabs. Fingers crossed. Mm, mm, mm. Love it, love it, love it. I'm just gonna admire the selection right, that's happening right now. It didn't pick up any stars, not, it didn't pick up the line or any of that stuff. Copy paste, there we have Saturn. Pretty awesome. Okay, so we have all our elements, we can start compositing. All right, so here we have all of our planets, which is really fun. We have um, the Earth. Right, it looks cool. Here's this version as well. I like this one, we'll go with it. The moon, the hand. From there, since I wanna do a lot of manipulation, I'm actually gonna convert these to smart objects and that's gonna protect the pixels. So I can shrink it down, scale it back up without losing quality. So we'll go through and we'll select the hand. We'll do a convert to smart object, bam convert to smart object. Um, for those of you who do this a lot, make this a shortcut. So I make this a shortcut as well. Uh, it's just mashing all the keys together, then hit S. I do control option command S. That's my shortcut. But I'll go through and I'll make shortcuts, or excuse me, make these all smart objects. I know they're smart objects because I have a little page right there, so perfect. Bam, shortcut key, shortcut key, shortcut key. Oh yeah, let's get this rocket. Shortcut key. And again, why I'm doing that is so I could shrink them down, increase their size, and they're not really gonna, we're still gonna have that same amount of quality, which is really good. All righty. All right. Thank you so much, Michelle. You are so nice to me. I appreciate it. Uh, let's turn off all this stuff. Again, we're talking about the moon landing. We're like reaching for the moon in the 60s, right? So we're kind of doing... I don't know, kind of an editorial illustration, basically. So we'll take this hand, we'll move it down. We can rotate it, make it look like it's reaching for this moon, clear up here. We'll maybe put the moon behind, right? Which kind of works, but we still have that thumb issue, right? So what do we do? We create a layer sandwich. I know it's only 10, 15 in the morning, a little early for lunch, but we're gonna create our layer sandwich and disregard my dumb jokes, but I would duplicate this. What's duplicate? Command J jumps that layer. This second one is just gonna be the thumb, just like that, and we'll put it underneath. This one is gonna be, you know, all the fingers and everything. So you have the hand and just the thumb. So what do we wanna do? We wanna go to our uh, thumb layer, that smart object, and what I could even do this might be a case where I might try the quick selection tool to jump in and select the palm. Anything where I want that moon to kind of overlap, that's what I would select. And just to be safe, I'll just do this huge selection like that. I'm saying, hey, only keep this, mask it, boom, click that mask button, boom, there's my thumb. Fingers are masked out, we're good to go. Uh, let me know da, 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 if you have questions. He mentioned it though, I did see that comment in there. So so let's take this, this other one, this hand in front. Well, again, we have that thumb. You ready for this? You ready for some magic, people? 
It's like, well, if I'm creating a layer sandwich, like I, you know, I kind of want the opposite, like keep everything except for the hand. Well, watch this. I can hold down the option key or alt key if you're on a PC, drag that up. Boom, I've just duplicated. But now I technically have two thumbs. Well, I do have two thumbs. Jeez, Ugh. I have so many dumb jokes is what I have today. Command I to invert it. That's what we're gonna do, Command I. Boop, inverted it. Now we have the rest of that hand. So again, we duplicated it by option dragging and then we inverted it and now we have the opposite and now we have our complete hand and we can move this, this around and anything else that we wanna move around. So if we decide, hey, we wanna put the earth in there, get in the earth just between those two, move that earth around, we got it going on, things like that. Shrink it down. Yeah, the moon and the earth are the same size. Sure, Paul, <laughs> whatever you say. But we have this going on. We're reaching for the moon. Maybe it's just out of reach. I don't know. I kind of like that sort of look, right? Keep in mind, if you rotate it or do anything with it, you do need to uh, rotate both masks. Do something like that. That's what I'm going for. Reaching for it. A little bit of an overlap. Right, maybe we'll have these other planets in the background. We'll work on those later. Those aren't as important. But it's it's important to talk about, um, you know, visual interest. You know, this isn't exactly in the center. Let's put it off center, put that moon up there, right? Is the moon gonna be reflecting light? Should we think about that? How can we make this even like more integrated with uh, with the um, the background? Like what, what what could we do? What could we do to make this look a little bit better? <laughs> First off, the hand is way too bright. I want to make it look like it's in space, right? At least do I give it a cool tint, right? So those are some things we can try. Um, uh, so that's what I would do. Let's take uh, this hand. Let's go down to our adjustment layers. And this was where I'd try, say, a photo filter, right? This just gives me the ability, using this lovely properties panel, to maybe give it a cool tint rather than a warm tint, right? So again, I'll click right there, I'll go to cooling, right? I could sample, for instance, sample that background color, get in there, I don't know, maybe adjust it like so, click okay. And what it's doing is it's creating a cool cast. Let's increase this, see, that's what it's doing. So you can start to see how it's changing, uh, not only the hand, but everything. So that's how I can kind of give it a cool cast if I want to, I want it to just, uh, apply to a couple of these things. I can, to just that hand, there we go. We can clip it like that. But you can see the difference between those two, right? That's working out okay. So what does that mean? Well, guess what? You have to add another one. Uh, maybe you'll jump into brightness and contrast because again, daily creative challenge. We'll keep it simple. We can make this darker. Let's do this. Ooh, what did I just do? Ooh, there we go. And it's back. Clip it, right? We can start to do some things like this and and see if it looks okay. But there's an even better way that I want to uh, sort of change this, by the way. So anything I do here, I actually need to uh, duplicate and put down here on the thumb too, just so you know. But sort of here, this already looks better. Okay, so I'm gonna save this. So we're adding just that nice cooling effect. We've, uh, we're separated out the brightness and contrast from the cooling. We can control those differently. And this is looking pretty good, actually better than I expected. So, uh, but I did wanna show you this as well. I can literally take, let's say I have another hand just for kicks. Let's say I have this other hand right here. Let's flip it. Uh, and again, this is just, just for kicks. Say I have this other hand. Watch this. I can go to filter, neural filters. I love this, by the way. I'm so glad I'm covering compositing today because I absolutely love compositing. I can't get enough of it. Go into harmonization. So with harmonization, I can pick the layer that I want to match to. Match the stars in the background, right? It will go through, and again, we're dealing with this hand. Boom. That's what it did. See how cool it made it? 
It made it look like it's a dead hand. That's kind of the problem. That's okay, we can tone down the strength, right? So through here with all these controls, I have the ability to sort of adjust any of these properties to get this dialed in even more if I want to. So again, I absolutely love harmonization. Try it out for yourself. Don't forget to output it as a smart filter so you could actually change it later. Click OK. And that's your sort of one click way of matching everything, which is pretty awesome. Cool. But I'm going to go with still continue with my first one. Uh, we'll, we'll add this Apollo 11 because what did that, you know, this is all about Apollo 11 kind of landing on the moon. If you believe that sort of thing, that's crazy. I'm <laughs> just joking. Ah, oh, I kill me. All right. Maybe the earth is in the distance. I don't know. It's like clear down here in the corner and just have fun compositing at this point. It's like, yeah, let's put that down there. We're reaching for the moon. We get a hint of the earth down here. Maybe there's other planets in the background as well. So let's turn those on. Yeah, I don't know which one this is, but yeah, let's shrink it down. It's a smart object. It's okay. It could be back there. Um, what I'd even do here is I'd play with the blend modes too. So for this planet, I would change this. I would try probably one of these li like lighten. See, look what it does. Lighten. Lighten actually blends this in kind of with the background, which is awfully nice. So again, just some things that you can do that are super easy to make this an interesting composite. You can even lower the opacity if you want to. You start to see the other stars behind it. Um, and if you don't like that, then it means to add another adjustment layer like we've been doing. Maybe brightness and contrast, right? Uh, maybe take down the brightness, kind of push it back there. And only, not only that, just like we did before, uh, we could steal a cooling filter. Steal that cooling filter and apply it to the planet if we want to as well. Okay, so I'm doing all my matching. I have this in there. Um, I'm, I only have a couple minutes left, so I gotta hurry through this, right? And start to add my planets. Maybe you either wanna, you wanna do one or two things to make this look realistic. Do you want glow from the moon? Or do you want uh, a shadow on the hand? So that's just some things to think about. I'd like to make it more realistic. I'm going to go pro, pro on you. Uh, Command L will bring up levels, so I can make that a little bit darker. Maybe I'll go into, again, brightness and contrast. Clip it. You know, do I want to make it darker, but only certain parts of it darker? Paint on that mask to get rid of some of that brightness so it stays brighter on the top, but I'm actually using this layer mask to add that shadow. See what I'm doing? Give it that shadow like so, right? And then we can start painting on it as well. So where those fingertips are, we'll add a new layer. Hit B for brush. And then start painting in. Oh. There we go. Move this up to the top. Sorry. It needs to be in front of this. Just start to kind of like paint in using a low flow. Like do we add a contact point for that finger and maybe this finger, right? So you can start to have some fun painting on there. Even painting on the hand. Look at how smart we're getting. This is most of compositing. It's like coming in here, maybe adding a layer, making sure it's just clipped to the hand and this will be the some shading. I'll just throw some shading in there. And what's gonna happen here is it's only gonna be able to paint on the hand, which is awesome. Cause I just wanna make this a little bit darker right here, maybe where that contact point is. Kind of exaggerating, over exaggerating, it's a little much. Is there such a thing as over exaggerating? I mean, that's what exaggerating is. <laughs> so anyways, I could make that look realistic. We'll go back down to this hand down here as I get down to my final minute, um, you know, paint, make this look a lot darker too on that side. So now you have that sort of reaching out look. Uh, does that look good? I don't know, you guys tell me, right? Do we try uh, different backgrounds too? Because remember we have this one. What if we throw that in there? How does that look? Last thing I'm gonna do, the overall adjustments I wanna make in here, and this is not bad. 
if I just kind of scale this up and include the sky, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. It's still looking a little fake. Um, to hide, uh, to really sort of unify an image, this is the last thing I'm gonna do, is add an adjustment layer. And this adjustment layer is gonna be a color lookup. I love color lookups. It's gonna open up this properties panel. And from here, you can select these like preset settings, almost like Instagram filters. We'll do a two strip look, right? That changes the look of it all. Um, we'll do crisp winter, right? That gets rid of all of those uh, warm tones and sort of solidifies it as a composite. Drop blues. I'm actually into this drop blues actually makes it look a little bit more uh, retro, but you guys get the idea. Have some fun, play with those, make a cool composite, post it to uh, good old Discord, and thank you so much for hanging out with me on this fine day today. Appreciate you guys. That's all I have for you. Hopefully you had fun. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.